Hey, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to talk about the blockchain and the block stack. There's a bunch of videos out there. I'm just going to kind of explain how you know uh, blockchain kind of works. There's lots of videos you can check out, but um, I want to get into this idea of the block stack. Often blockchain and Bitcoin or cryptocurrency are, are tied together and they, they have every reason to be. And that's because Bitcoin is based on um, financial incentives to, to maintain something called the blockchain. The blockchain is um, essentially, you think about nodes of data, blocks of data, and people can t um, make their own copy of that block of data and make sure that all, everything stays up to date. And there's this financial, and these are, so these are public ledgers. And so you, you, it's the idea of typically a bank would keep track of you know, who's transferring what data to uh, what money to what person. And said this is a this is a public ledger, so um, essentially people uh, people maintain. Um, these public ledgers, and people can create copies of them so that they can't be manipulated. Not one person ever owns them, and so that's kind of blockchain technology working with Bitcoin. So a um, lot more videos out there on the internet explaining all that. I'll, I also recommend checking out the paper that came out in 2008 um, from I forget his name off the top of my head, but t uh, take a read of that. Today I want to kind of when I first was introduced to the blockchain technology. I mean this is been out since 2008. Um, I first, one of the first good ideas and first easily understandable ideas I heard was related to social networking. And someone that, so I was at a hackathon, Hack the North, and someone uh, came up with the idea that you could create a, um, a social network on a blockchain. So the way it would work is um, all the data would be that, that public uh, block, so um, it's like this, the equivalent of the ledger, and so so picture you have all your data and you can create as many nodes as possible and um, typically with social network only one social network could reference that data they own it because it's on their servers like Twitter all your tweets live in, in um, their data but instead it, it would be in this shared one so then you could also create Facebook and it would also be referencing the same data and now what makes it, what this ha allows to happen is you could have um, a lot more free speech that was their kind of their pitch because although Facebook may filter uh, X Y and Z you could have um, a, a brand new social networking and brand new client that you built reference um, the same social network blockchain and it could you know be completely unfiltered and so the idea is you all the data still exists it's just certain clients would filter and no single social network would essentially own all the data and so this is like the idea, and I, it's for me it was the easiest way I could wrap my head around the blockchain. I mean, Bitcoin made um, somewhat sense, but this is where the actual blockchain technology comes in. So when I talk about blockchain, I'm not talking about Bitcoin. I'm just talking about this idea that you have a decentralized node that can be copied, and it holds data. That's where this next idea comes in. A couple days ago, I just discovered this. So um, Blockstack it can started their token sale. And so Blockstack is a decentralized internet. They literally want to create a new internet. Now they want to, so right now the way it works is, um, there's a ton of TED Talks about, and their favorite thing is to talk, talk about how like five companies own all your data. But um, there's like, the way it works is, it still acts as like your normal internet. They just came with a, they have a Blockstack browser, but you can also just get an extension. Um, and essentially you have one login and you own all your data. So instead of, like me signing into Facebook, using my Facebook posting and stuff, and then Facebook owning all my data. I actually own all my data, so so that so it, it's it's a lot better in terms of that. Um, so you know, this past week I kind of got started with it. Uh, I explored um, developing with it. Now there's a lot some a lot of limitations because it's I, it's like six years old, but I want I want to say it's still early on. And the one is is multi-reading. Um, this is actually supported, I believe, with Gaia, which is one of their tools. Everything's open source. If you, if you look at my screen right now, you can go check out their docs. Um, they have the entire API. And so the way it works is you sign in with your Blockstack account to a website. You do X, Y, and Z. So let's say um, they have one called Glide. That's um, it's essentially like a diary app. And so you sign in, you write all of this stuff down, and then you um, you exit, you sign out. But the thing is, Glide never actually sees any of your data. Um, they may store it in like you know public 
like an S3 um, storage or something like that. But your data actually only is owned by you, so it's encrypted when it leaves your browser. It gets encrypted, so Glide doesn't ever um, can never decrypt it. Like people who make the app can never decrypt it, and then it gets unencrypted when when it comes back to your browser. Now this is um, a lot, what a lot of people don't realize is. So let's say Dropbox Dropbox doesn't do this, or they may, but I, I have no idea. Um, I upload a bunch of files to Dropbox. They're encrypted, or I upload a bunch of files to Dropbox. Well, the Dropbox may be using that those those files. I'm pretty sure in their terms say that they own them, and they may be using those um, files. And so what would happen is they could have an engineer in the back end be looking at my data. Maybe it's private stuff, and, and they could be all looking at it with it because um, they have this back door in. Or um, a government can access it. So one thing that um, I stopped using BlackBerry, like BBM, is because they gave the um, the RCMP, which is the uh, Canadian Federal Police, like the FBI, but for Canada, uh, access a uh, backdoor access to uh, the messages. So there was no point in it being encrypted if if the company is just going to give away the, your data unencrypted. And so that's what one thing this block stack really enables. So it's, it's Essentially, you own all your data. It gets stored on, uh, I don't know, uh, Dropbox, and it gets you, you can pick where you want to store your data. But the point is, then these other clients could be um, built off it. Um, and so, and with that, and so definitely, that's kind of how the block stack kind of works. I'm gonna be putting out a video this week as well, um, like right now with this one, um, actually developing with block stack. It's it's really unfortunate that they don't have multi reading um, clearly documented yet because it's really difficult to build any app if I can just use it. So like Glide is uh, essentially they want to make it like essentially like Medium, but it can't be like Medium because you're the only one who can uh, decrypt your own file, right? So it's more of a diary writing app right now. Um, but they are going to try to introduce multi reading, which makes essentially only you can read and write on your data. But only and then you can make allow it so that the public can read your read your data, and so what that would be would be like again like Medium would be a perfect example. But if 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 you didn't like the way Medium was filtering your free speech or whatever, you could go build out your own client too and just build and still use that same data without ever having to um, uh, like you wouldn't have to you wouldn't lose all that data to to the the owner of the app. And so that it, it's just it's super powerful. Um, I highly recommend checking it out. It's it's blockstack.org. Um, they're doing a bunch of cool stuff. Follow them. They have a bunch of videos on YouTube. Uh, that it's like their YouTube Academy. They they explain a lot of questions. They explain it better than I probably did. Um, I just thought I would, I would kind of create this video just to kind of explain um, my own personal thoughts on it. And uh, I got another video to come out today that is actually developing with it. So check that out. And I'll include that video right here. Um, if you're interested, uh, developing with it is what I recommend doing. It'll give you a way better understanding of it, so right here.